There's many things that you can do to try to get people to trust you. You got to offer money back guarantees. You're going to offer like, you got to get people to trust you along the way. It's called the campaign planner, in which we take a video asset, a single image. It's all built by our team on our side. We come up with some copy variations and then we jump on a call and we help you set up a campaign. Now, I'm, I don't mean like don't spend a single penny, but we want to be really careful about spending money. So what we do is that part of, part of our process is to make you guys marketing experts. So whenever we build a campaign, we're going to get on a call and we're going to build that campaign out with you. And we're going to show you how we would select an audience so we can try to find your demographic. For example, let me give you a hot tip that you're going to learn from us here along the way. Facebook has the ability to target based on income demographics. So if, uh, for example, you want to exclude... Like I, I'm in the top 1%, right? I make millions of dollars a year. You don't want to target me because I'm not going to be your audience. I'm not going to be buying $100 watches. I'm going to be buying $15,000 watches. That's me. So you want to do everything that you can to exclude me from your audience because otherwise Facebook is going to be showing your ads to people that are not interested in buying your products. That's fine. You just got to find your audience. So Facebook has the ability to exclude certain zip codes that have a certain income level. For example, if you want to get rid of um, maybe the top uh, 50% zip codes in the country and maybe target the, the ones that are making $40,000 a year or less, then that's something that Facebook can help you with. I'm saying that maybe 50% is not the right way, but maybe excluding the, the top 20% might be something that's going to save you a lot of money. So audience is going to be an essential part to your success in this particular process because otherwise you're going to be spending money on potentially audiences that are not going to buy your product. So we, we're going to build this out together. But when the time comes that you have some of this content created and we're ready to actually send a campaign out, all you got to do is set a budget. And that's part of the campaign plan. We're going to suggest, for example, let's get $1,000 invested on this campaign. That's it. And you're not putting $1,000 because you want to get return on investment. You want to put $1,000 on this because you want to get data. You want to see what happens with your $1,000 return. You want to see how many people engage with the ad. You want to see the comments people are leaving. You want to see how many click to your website. You want to see how many people actually added a watch to their cart. How many of them actually went through and purchased it, if any of them purchased it? You want to look at data. You're buying data. That's part of the process of, of buying ads. So what I want to make sure is that you guys don't go all in and put $100,000 in advertising, your life savings. I'm just making that up right now because I don't know your finances into a marketing campaign, expecting return on investment of three, four, five, or something like that, because that would not be realistic. The first stage of marketing has to be about getting data to seeing what people uh, are going to be responding to. And from there, we optimize after a week of running the ads, we get back on the call, Brad get back, gets back on a call with you. And then we look at what happened with the ads exactly, right? What did we accomplish? Did we accomplish anything at all? Let's see what we learned. It was not a waste of advertising dollars. It was an investment of advertising dollars. You actually put some energy to find out what people's responses were to it. Because here's something else that there's so many things that you can do guys in the world of marketing, right? Like if, if you guys wanted to, for example, at the beginning stages, you can potentially just have people reach out to you to find out more details about your collection. And then you sell them your watches over the phone. Who knows? There's many things that you can do to try to get people to trust you. You got to offer money back guarantees. You're going to offer like you got to get people to trust you along the way before they actually start committing to you. And you can start building a machine that scales on its own. My business, Natural Slim, has been in business for 16 years now. I still, I can tell you right now, after 16 years of providing value on social media channels, of uh, uh, generating millions of followers across the board on all our channels, I still invest a dollar. And if I get three dollars back, I call that a successful campaign. And that's 16 years into the process. My value, and this is something that I can give you guys as a takeaway also, is in the repetition of that customer, getting that customer to buy from you again. So when you're a watch advocate, when you are a fan of watches, you keep on buying watches. There's not 
just one watch that you buy, right? You want to keep on switching between watches because you enjoy and you're passionate about the collection. So ideally you guys get to a point in which you get people that keep on buying your collection. You keep on expanding the collection. And also you get your people to buy watches for you from you so they can give it to their friends and family and using them as gifts. So you want to get people to keep on buying from you. So the, the, the value of a person is not just what they give you up front is what you can get them to give you over the lifetime of their involvement with you and your brand. So it's kind of like a big process. I'm giving you guys a major overview of how this whole thing looks. But again, like, don't worry about the ones that are telling you that it's not possible. Uh, if you guys are passionate, you can do it. You got to have patience. Uh, there's a reason why most people don't um, don't make it in the world of business uh, and most people become employees because it's a process that requires a lot of patience and requires a lot of dedication and requires a lot of like willingness to fail over and over again to try things. And the world of marketing, guys, is like, um, I like to describe it almost as your baseball players, right? If you guys get to bat three out of 10 times and get on base, you're a Hall of Famer, right? You're going to get enshrined in the, uh, in, in the Hall of Fame. And marketing is like that. Uh, you got to be willing to try things out and implement things. And some of these things are going to work. Some of the things are not going to work. Pull the plug. Don't bleed out. Go and try another one. And that's basically how you got to be set up with that mindset of success. And our goal here is that over the next 12 months, you get ready for massive expansion of your brand and you already understand marketing as well as we do. 